All right, we've overcome the first hurdle of the night. <laughs> so, welcome in to the first guest kitchen show. I'd like to introduce the famous by how many times I've been saying he's going to come in, Kyle <laughs> Ross. Uh, uh, Kyle, why don't you tell the people a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm a barista at Black Dog Coffee House. Um, I've been working at coffee for about three years. Uh, I love making pour overs at home, so today I'm going to show you guys a little bit of what goes into making a pour over. All right, so how we're going to set this show up tonight is we are, he's going to be making a couple of pour overs and we're going, I'm going to be asking him questions about why he's choosing those techniques, uh, different things he uses, different things he looks for, uh, some of his experiences. So if you have questions, drop them in the chat and I'm going to try to uh, really play on his expertise and just see if we can get to know him a little bit better through the art of coffee. So uh, we're going to first kind of have, I'm going to have him explain what a pour over is, why a pour over, like why would you ever want to order a pour over? Because I think for me, like when I see a coffee shop, you know, I see the menu board, I see everything. I see, um, you know, Americano and lattes and frappuccinos and espressos, and I'm comfortable with that. But when I see that little chalkboard or that little piece of paper, and it has, you know, three different types of origins and they're doing a pour over, I get really, really intimidated. A, well, now I'm just starting to discover what origins mean, and if you you know from your your ilk that yeah. if if you, if you even hesitate a little bit, they'll pounce on you. <laughs> but two, it it's very time consuming compared yeah. to say making an espresso shot, correct? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it takes usually about five minutes. Okay, yeah. so do you like pour overs? Let's start there. Yeah, yeah, I like pour overs. Um, I think if you're just trying to taste the coffee. Um, and just try like different origins of coffee. Uh, pour overs are really the best way because what makes pour overs unique is that you're able to control all the individual variables. Um, so you can, you know, kind of cater the way that you make it to a certain kind of coffee to bring out different flavors. Um, yeah, and it just kind of makes it more interesting. So before we get like too deep into it, let's just talk about the roast level. Yeah. So are you looking for a light roast, a medium roast, a dark roast? Vienna roast, like what is the, when you're looking to get those flavors out, like what's the roast you're looking for? Yeah, so usually like lighter to medium roasts are better because I mean the darker you roast a coffee from my experience, uh, it just, they all kind of start to taste more similar. So lighter roasts usually have those more unique flavors and if you want to bring out those flavors and really notice them compared to like a batch brew, I think pour overs help with that. So if there, so when you read on the bag and you see these unique flavors, you see strawberry, you see peach, you see blueberry. So yeah. pour over is really where you can experience those kind of flavors. Yeah. I know everyone's been at the store and they bought, you know, I'm going to get peach and they put it in and it tastes like chocolate. Or yeah. I'm going to get peach and it tastes like, or is kind of where you can really start to explore what they intended when they grew it. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay, so we're going to now allow Kyle, um, I'm going to First, we'll make sure we got some questions here. So, uh, Lisa MB, if you were to look up at the right, uh, we'll see the camera. There you go. Uh, what is your favorite roast? So that's a good question to start out. What is your favorite roast? My favorite roast, um, as far as like light or dark, I definitely like lighter roasts. Um, for countries, it kind of depends. Like, I, I change my mind. Uh, I go through different phases. Um, Right now, I've been really liking Ethiopia's more. I really like Central American countries as well. Okay, yeah. um, so what is your ideal flavor that you're looking for? So when I'm a roast, like I, I hear roast, what, the first question I'm always looking for is like, what flavor are they looking for? Because that kind of can help dial it into like the roast type and also yeah. the roast profile. So what's, what flavors are you looking at? Yeah, flavors, um, I, I like stuff that's fruitier, but I don't like stuff as much that's like really bright, citrusy, fruity. Um, I like the more like muted, sweet, fruity flavors like peaches or um, just like stone fruits. Huh. Okay, so yeah, like savory sweet. So savory sweet, and that is, it's kind of the hardest one. I mean, you can with pour, like, I will admit, pour overs is pretty new. I don't want to say it's like new to this yeah. country because if you go to Scandinavia, I mean, pour over has been a part of their culture for over a hundred years. But in the United States pour overs are relatively new, um, in my own opinion. And so what we're seeing is everyone raced to those fruity flavors, and now I think we are shifting to those stone fruit flavors, which yeah. is actually a little bit more 
far, but like the light roast is where everyone went initially before. We're, we're moving more to that uh, medium roast, but trying to stay true to those fruity, that, that fruity flavor that you're looking for. Yeah. Um, so that hopefully we can find something here that either I've done or I see you brought some of your own. Yeah. So we'll we'll plug. We'll do our plugs right now. So Messenger Coffee, a great specialty roaster, and also kind of uh, tied to Black Dog. So, yeah. Um, this is a Papua New Guinea. It's got dried apple, earth, and grapefruit. So mm -hmm. right at that flavor that you're looking for. Um, also, we have a couple of Ethiopians that I've been roasting. We'll try those out uh, tonight. And there's a lot of specific questions about the uh, pour over. We'll get to those here in a second when we uh, get into it. Um, but let's uh, let's just start the process. Let's walk through it. And have you, as you go through each thing, I'm going to probably ask you some questions, and then we will uh, see if we can't meet all the demands of the of the people here. Awesome. So, take us through it. Okay. So the first thing, I don't know if this is off camera for you guys, but we have um, this is hot. Uh, hopefully. Sweet. Yeah. So uh, we have our water here. Um, we're using a gooseneck kettle. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do right off the bat is get our water heated. So that's been heating up a little bit. Um, so whenever you're making a pour over, the last thing that you wanna do is grind the beans because you want the beans to be as fresh as possible. Uh, so we got our water going, uh, it's hot now. So we're gonna grind some beans. Um, the grind size that you want for your beans is gonna be not exactly medium, but not fine. It'll be kind of like a medium fine. Um, so here we're using a Barazza Encore. I just have it set to 15 because that's what the user manual recommended it to be on for pour overs. So I'm just gonna brew one at 15 and kind of see if that tastes good. Um, so what we're gonna do first. Okay, so while he's getting that set up, uh, if you wanna throw me mine, yeah. I'm just gonna, I'll talk to the camera while you're setting it up. So what we have here, this is a pretty standard, what would be a single serving pour over coffee maker. This is actually the Hario V60. Uh, very common, I'm guessing this is what you guys will use at Black Dog as well. Yeah. Um, so it comes in many different styles. It comes in steel, it comes in plastic, which is this one. It also comes in ceramic. Um, I tend to like to use plastic. Plastic loses the less heat. Uh, ceramic feels probably the best in your hands. And then steel, I mean steel, steel, it's, the, it's cheap. It's, you probably get one pretty, pretty cheap. But uh, this is plastic. And all this is, is just a little carafe where the coffee will end up in. So he's kind of got the same setup here. So this is the pour over. So if you've ever seen one of these, this is a V60 pour over. And this is just a little, little carafe here. Um, another thing when we do talk pour overs is the filter. So when we start talking about filter, this is just a paper filter. Again, there's many different filter styles. There's metal filters, there's cloth filters, and there's paper filters. Do you have a preference about the, paper, the filter that you use? Um, I just use paper because uh, like the, between paper and metal, uh, paper will absorb some of the oils that can have like harsh tasting flavors uh, when metal will just let that go through. So I think paper is the way to go for so, my preferences. Now, do you wash the filter before? Yes, I do. Yes, uh, there, with paper, if I agree that paper is my preferred uh, method as well. Uh, there has been a lot of literature and from talks that the paper does suck up some of the uh, less desirable flavors, as he said. Uh, you've got to wash it though, because with they have their own undesirable flavors and that flavor is paper. Uh, so when he, hopefully he'll show you, obviously show you the paper um, and then we'll get to go. So I'm gonna let him kind of uh, start talking again. I'll shut up a little bit. So if you got questions for Kyle, uh, direct them to me. And I'll try to keep feeding him questions. Yeah. So I'm gonna grind my beans. Um, I'm using two and a half, or 22 and a half grams. Uh, so in here, I don't know if it's, you can see it, but uh, I'm weighing out about 23 grams uh, because some of that will be kind of stuck inside the grinder. So you wanna weigh out a little bit extra. Got some runners. Whoa. Get in there. Get in there. Trying to escape your fate. Everyone grinds. All right. Is there a top one? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, any, anything you need. All right. Honestly, you can just burn it on the ground. All right. Yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and grind it. Okay, I'm also getting some early direct sniffs. Pinky, I think, I think everyone's right where you got to 
we'll see if we can't try that out here a little bit. Always a great part of the show when we have loud noises. Yeah. off a lot of Kyle's recipe today so if you see me writing things down all that's right. what I'm doing and then I can share that with you when we're all done so if any of you are wanting this um, I'll report it back both on Instagram and I'll drop it in the notes here as we're going <laughs> yeah so what you're gonna do first is you're just gonna take your water and kind of run it around the inside and that I just find that when the, the cones a little wet it helps the paper stick so for the filter, you're just gonna take the end of it and fold it over like this, just so it kind of sticks in there. And then once you have that in there, you wanna, like Brian talked about, just kind of rinse it out. And doing this, it one, it'll help uh, heat up the cone so it's preheated, and then it'll also help to soak out any flavors that could be in the paper that you don't want in your coffee. Yeah. I'm gonna plug my own kitchen here. Eventually we're gonna get a sink and be a little bit more I guess real kitchen here. We uh, luckily Kyle came in the you know kind of the half metamorphosis phase of the kitchen. <laughs> I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Rick Belvedere for the tile here. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna pour my beans in or my grounds into here, and just kind of watching it, making sure that. I am at, I don't have enough beans. So I came up a little short, so I'm just gonna grind a little bit extra. So notice that he weighed both before the grind and after the grind. That's very important because as he said, a lot of, you could lose beans in here. Now he'll get into why the, med, the weight is so important here in a little bit, but uh, when it's very, very important that you keep the uh, grind size. Seriously taking notes. For tomorrow and I expect a full report on that vegetable beer. All right. Yeah those look really cool. I agree they look really cool. <laughs> and you want to make sure that you're as exact as possible. Um, yeah just that way you can it's gonna taste the same every time. So does, now you set it to 15 does that hmm? just by look does that look about like what you want it to be or are you already this, seeing problems with the grind? This looks like it's a little finer than I would like, um, but we're gonna brew it and kind of see what what it comes out at. So as we're brewing it, we'll have like a certain time that we're shooting for and just, well, I'll be able to judge by the way that the coffee looks when we're done. So once we have the beans in there, the paper's been soaked, we're gonna do what's called a bloom for 50 grams. So I'm just gonna start my timer on my scale and then pour 50 grams of liquid in here. With the paper filters we uh, mentioned before, um, do you have like any hipster any hipster trade secrets to your paper? Like, do you would you ever use a recycled paper, or do you like a new filter? I personally like new because let it burn. <laughs> but uh, is there any anything you uh, got to say about sustainability? We got some mustache twisters here that want to know. Um, I mean, I know. I feel like it. It's good to be sustainable, but for the best flavor. Just paper is the way to go, and it's unfortunate, but as long as you're recycling and everything, you know. <laughs> Let it rip. So what I just did there was called the bloom. So I did that for 30 seconds, and that just kind of helps any of the gases escape in there. Um, oh. Okay. Yeah. So pouring the coffee in there. Um, I have certain times that I'm going for. Um, I can kind of talk through that in a sec. So what I do is I do the balloon for 50 grams and then I do two separate pours. And my overall weight that I'm shooting for is 375 grams. And you just kind of want to gently pour in concentric circles from the outside to the inside. Look at that fine wrist work, everybody. <laughs> So about how many of these do you do a day? Um, honestly, not that many. Like I probably make like 
two <laughs> a day. See, you're letting him get away from his craft. Yeah. All of you go out tomorrow and order a pour over. And right. really, when they're like, when they look at you like, this is going to take me five minutes, you go, yeah, it's going to take you five minutes. So once you uh, reach your, uh, once you're done pouring, you just want to kind of give it a little swirl. And the idea there is that you want it to be, you want the water to be flowing through the beans as consistently as possible. So as you're pouring, the water is kind of stirring up that bed of beans. Um, and you want to make sure that once you're done pouring, you just swir swirl it around so those beans kind of rest and the water is able to evenly flow through all of them. Yeah. Okay. I got a question about the boiled water. Is the, is the temperature of the water, so boiling water is 212 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Is there a temperature that you are shooting for? Do you want yeah. 212? So um, just from like the research that's been done, the best temperature is between 195 and 205 degrees. Um, I usually shoot for about 200 degrees um, just because that's what I try to be consistent with all of the coffee that I brew. Uh, but yeah, because with coffee, if the water is hotter, you'll extract more. So if it's too hot, you'll end up getting some like bitter flavors in your coffees. And then if it's too low, you won't be extracting enough. So it'll just be very harsh and acidic. Um, another question about water, do you use filtered water or do you just use straight out of the sink? Now this is more for our Texas people because they're basically <laughs> drinking sewer water. Yeah, ideally you'd want to use filtered water. Um, if uh, When I'm at home, uh, my the city that I live in, the water isn't too bad. So I just use water out of the sink. Uh, in the future I would like to invest in a filter, but in the shop that I work at we do use filtered water. And this is uh, filtered water. Now it's not a really deep filter. With coffee, you want to keep minerals and everything in. I have filtered out the chlorine taste and any heavy metals, but I've left in all the minerals that naturally come with a city city water for for this nice. this water. So I thought it looked kind of fine um, when I was brewing it, and if you can kind of see in there, uh, the time that I'm shooting for is about three thirty, and right now it's about four minutes and it's still not quite drained, and it looks kind of muddy in there. As it drains, I'll show you. Um, yeah, here it's coming coming through. Yep. It looks like a muddy riverbed. When what we want it to look like is like wet sand. Yeah, that muddy look is no good. Like it's yeah. still gonna taste like coffee, but you're going to get some over-extracted flavors. Yeah. Um, over-extraction, you'll hear that use, term used a lot in like more, there's a trash can right, right there. Oh. Um, over extraction, all that means is there's too much coffee flavor in your water. You want about 1.5%. Uh, over extraction is anything like 2% and it starts tasting really gritty and really kind of dirty in your mouth. Yeah. So yeah, this is kind of the process when I get a new coffee to dial it in. I'll just kind of brew one um, and then I'll kind of see what it's like. I'll still drink it and then maybe the next day I'll know like, oh, that was over extracted so I'll loosen it a little bit and then the next day when I make coffee it, it's better. Um, did you want to try this? Yeah. Okay. It becomes muddy because it was there's too much grounded dust in there. Yeah. So that's why it becomes muddy like that. All the finest particles go to the top, the heavier particles sink to the bottom and that's how he can tell there's just a lot more fine particles in there. Uh, a barata like this is pretty good for not like really blasting it to pieces but as it gets to its finer, it does mix a little bit. So um, let's take a let's just take a little taste. Yeah. What roast is this? So Papua this New is um, the Papua New Guinea from Messenger. Okay. So immediately, I'm not. It's not tasting. Too, I'm definitely tasting like a bitter, like yeah. ash that I don't think is ne that necessarily the quality of the roast. But I'm getting a lot of the mouthfeel is. It is kind of you can taste the finer sediments. It yeah. is, it's it does taste more delicate and muted. So yeah. definitely, it's not a bad cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. But I would say that the one adjustment that needs to be made for this would be yeah to change the grind size on. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's kind of pleasant at first, but then it kind of like sits on like the sides of your tongue in the back. It sits in the back. It's, very... and it, it's not pleasant. So yeah. the coffee itself is like sitting on the back of your throat. Yeah. So if you ever are tasting coffee and you're mm -hmm. wondering like why am I I can just keep, while I'm talking, it just keeps tasting more and more bitter. A lot of times that might be a sign that you overground it. So mm -hmm. overground, over grinding, if you're grinding on your own and you're trying to do something very, very delicate like this method. There's other methods you can get away with it. Aero presses, French sure. press, well, French press. <laughs> French press, you want to really just not grind it that, that, at, 
at all. Like just yeah. break the beans up, put it in there. Yeah. Um, filtered coffee, like drip coffee, you can get away with it. But if you are wanting to enter the world of a pour over, you really want to spend some time, like he's saying, to get your grind size just right. Yeah. So we got any questions? Is it correct way to sniff the coffee? People like fancy. So, is there a correct way to sniff the coffee? Now, you're now you got to understand he's on the barista side. Yeah. So a lot of the flavor work has been done. Now he's going to have his own part in the flavor game, but a lot of the sniffing has been done before the coffee even gets to him. Yeah. Uh, do you do any of your own sniffing? Not. Uh, I mean, like I'll sniff it. I'll sniff the beans to kind of like see what I'm getting into, uh, and then after I brew it, I'll like do a little sniff as I sip. I'm getting sniff, into sip. it. Uh, what I usually do is. <laughs> really just paddle it in there and then I just spit it everywhere yeah that really uh, gets it all over your tongue <laughs> um, yeah so yeah so we're gonna make another yeah, one do you want it now do you want to use the same coffee to help get it dialed in or would let's you want to use a different let's part? do one of yours one of yours yeah, okay. yeah. so what cool. yeah. I have just now I'll kind of unless you get set up uh, you can use mine and yeah, we'll send a person to go clean that one. Yeah. I'll, I'll go Is there like a bucket we can dump? Yeah. Because then we'll do this one, and then I'll have Kyle let me do it, so you guys can watch yeah. the idiot behind the old behind the old kettle. Okay. So Instagram looks like you guys just popped on. Uh, if you are checking us out on Instagram, uh, we're going. We've been brewing a bunch of pour overs. Uh, this is Kyle Ross from Black Dog uh, Black Dog Coffee in Lenexa, Kansas. Mm -hmm. Uh, he is showing me, he's trying to train a noob how to really do a good pour over, so he's giving me the coffee shop rundown. Uh, if you are watching us on Instagram, welcome. Uh, if you are really wanting to see you know, us go through this process again, and I'm gonna go do it, come over to Twitch, Fat Beans Coffee Lab uh, from Twitch. If you've never tried Twitch before, it's very friendly, it's ran by Amazon, it's not, it's not some fly-by-night basement app, it runs very well. Those of you who are on Twitch, thank you for joining us. If you've not followed us yet, uh, please do so. Just click the heart. Uh, that gives you notifications, and it also makes me just feel wanted. Uh, so if you've not done that yet, please do that. Um, Kyle Russ, this is a new Ethiopian I'm doing. I bought this specifically for my Chemex, my pour over, and my AeroPress. Uh, I tend to like Ethiopians best on the pour over, so I'm trying to get this. So I'm trying to get this. Do you have like a bucket that I can just pull the liquid into? Or like a just bring like a bowl. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm trying to get this dialed into uh, a good pour over blend. So I'm gonna let Kyle run through the process, you know, see if he can get it tuned up, and then we're gonna talk through if there's anything good that we want to keep, and if there's anything that we want to to get rid of. So Kyle, be gentle with him. Sweet. So the heart's on the line here. Yeah. Um, so every grinder is a little bit different. So me and him both have Baratzas, but the individual settings won't be exactly the same. So Brian, have you made this yet? Do you know like a good starting point that I should set this to? Um, I've not put it in the Baratza, but I would okay. say you need like we need to be living around around like yeah, I mean I would say maybe do just a little bit against what you normally do. Okay. Just see yeah. if you can't. I mean, I call it just, yeah. I think with this one we were way outside the left. Yeah. So. I've only done it on my hand grinder and that's we're not gonna get into that full scene. Alright. We need to keep running tally of the best broken quotes. Yeah, keep yeah, really dissect everything I say because that's what I need. This is usually I just free free form of consciousness. But uh, I appreciate it. Great job, Kyle. Absolutely. Uh, well, I'm going to say this several times, but thank you for doing this. I know yeah, we're in kind of a fly-by-night setup, but uh, this was one of the dreams when we first uh, got into this Twitch is that we'd start doing stuff like this. Even though I I never feel like I'm ready, I'm really glad that we, we did it and you got to be the first guest. I said you would be the first guest, and by golly, we did it. <laughs> yeah, I like his hair, too. <laughs> and you said that. Oh, <laughs> All right. I was gonna say, maybe it's not that's probably Audrey. Well, someone said it, Joe and Michael. That's my sister here, by the way. That's uh, my sister. <laughs> Yeah, no, and let, be, while we're uh, tuning us in, let, let the audience see that mustache, Kyle. <laughs> give, it a, give, it a little, give it a little twist. twist. Close, close. Give, a little yeah, twist. put it in there. That's, 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 <laughs> that's pure red, ladies and gentlemen. That's all red mustache. Alright, that looks a little too coarse, in my opinion. Yep. So, I'm gonna 
fast. Um, course can be done with the eye. It also can be done with the hand. So when you're twirling it in your finger, you want to almost be able to hold it, but not all the way. Brian, did you see Lisa's comment? She likes the science aspect of it. Yeah, and if you are big into science, which Lisa, I know that I, I feel that you are, Lisa's a, she's um, so. the pour over is the game for you. This is where if you start tweaking and you start taking notes, the coffee gets better and better and better. There are some more uh, fly by the seat of your pants methods, your drip coffees, your AeroPress coffees. Uh, but this one is, this is where baristas make their money. That's why the, when I said you go to your shops tomorrow, which all of you need to run out, go to a coffee shop tomorrow, pour over, pour over, pour over. Not Starbucks though, that's the one place, don't get a pour over from them. It, they have a lot of other things they do well, just not pour over. Adjust, like they, this. they have good plugs and good Wi-Fi. Do you want it? Up, down. Good. Adjust it. Got my producers in the back really barking out. So if you see arms and legs start to come in, that's that's the producers. Kyle has his own handler here today. The uh, the great Veronica Belvedere is here with us yeah. as well. You might see her as Bel Varte. So we've got some some Twitch legends are in the studio today. She's my care. All right. So I am going to. You could come to Fat Beans tomorrow. Uh, it's kind of a drive for you, though, vegetable beef. If you showed up, I make it. And I just take it as a great time. Yeah, that's it's just got too much at the end, but yeah. We got a Julie signing as well. And a good, like, little life hack to know is that usually the smaller bit of the bean, the coarser of the grind. So like lighter roast Ethiopias will have really tiny beans sometimes. And those you those you usually need to grind a little bit coarser. Yeah, these uh, the bigger beans tend to like explode, shred a little bit. These yeah. are pretty dense and they are small, so that's good advice. Every bean that you do, if you are trying to become good at port, you have to dial in your beans. And even him who gets the same beans from the same roaster. Every time you open a new bag, are you dialing, redialing in your grinder every time? Yeah, like I have, it's kind of nerdy, but <laughs> I take notes um, on what I've made before. So if I'm buying the same coffee that I've bought before and brewed, then I'll have like a good uh, rule of thumb to go by, but you still have to brew it and dial it in because every bag is a little different. When am I gonna grow my own hipster mustache? I am very <laughs> Scandinavian, so all I get are just angry patches. I will never have anything that uh, resembles the flow, the sustenance, the, the greatness of a, of a good twistable mustache. Um, I can grow cookies. I grow a good cookie beard. That just means it looks like I smash cookies all over my face. That is to answer your, uh, when's my mustache coming? We are all nerds here, you were safe, yeah. I mean, if you can't nerd out about uh, things you put in your body, what should you nerd out about? Be honest, how much better is the barbecue in Texas? Okay, that's a good question. First of all, ribs are better in Kansas City. But Kansas City, they do use a thick barbecue. And I'm not a thick barbecue guy. The thin barbecue sauce of Texas will always be true to my heart. But let's be honest, Memphis barbecue and South Carolina barbecue are better than both. Mark, get your book. Okay. So, so many quotes tonight. Kind of a better view of this. Um, so I just weighed them out, uh, put it, put the beans in there, kind of leveled out the bed. So I'm going to start my timer and do my blue. So I'm just going to pour the liquid in real fast, up to 50 grams. All right. And then you're just going to give it a stir. This just kind of helps all those grounds get wet. And then in this stage, you can kind of see. There might be some bubbles forming. That's kind of the the gas in there. In Call that. Air. Oh, you might hear it as a bloom. Um, yeah. And there, it's not much coffee is hitting into the reservoir. Most of it is staying in here, and it's allowing all the coffee to become saturated. That's very important when we get to that 1.5 extraction. This will help that we still are getting the flavors that we want. We don't want to leave those flavors behind.
Oh yeah. So uh, it looks like we started a barbecue war here. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> Does stirring help the finer pieces don't come to the top? No, that's going to happen naturally if they're in there. They normally will come to the top. Uh, just science. I don't know. That does look good. You're really getting see. I, and I want to note how just precise. Um, that's just being a pro. It's just <laughs> being an artist, being a pro. Best meat, South America. Can't argue with that. <laughs> what is the best booze to add to a fine cup of joe? Well, interesting question, P. Brogren. Um, Bailey's, because it's already cream, so it ride, it's already got a train that it rides in with. Um, that would probably be my answer. I guess if you snuck whiskey in there, I mean, at least you'd have the whiskey. If it was bad tasting, it's still, you, you won't care in a little bit. Good question, thank you. It's a slower, thinner stream. You can go. Is it better? Is it the, if you were doing a nice thin stream? Is that yeah. important? Yeah, because when you do, as you're pouring the rounds, they're kind of swimming around. Uh, and if you do like a real fast, thick stream, then they'll just be tumbling all over the place. Um, and what you're looking for is just like even extraction. So the water evenly flowing through. You don't want it to make any channels. Um, so doing a smaller stream just helps not disrupt the coffee as much, helps it flow through evenly. Also, the stream coming down here, you know, I mean, do you want it to be consistent? Do you want to look like a prostate issue? Like, <laughs> what do you want? Um, it kind of varies throughout. I mean, when this is full, it'll be kind of an even stream. Now that it's kind of going down, it slows down a little bit. Um, what is... What is Kahlua? That's good too. That's just a coffee with core. Okay, so this one might be a little too fine. As still well. a little too fine. So we're at about three, fifteen, and you can still see it's not as muddy, but I, I agree it's gonna mud up a little bit. Yeah. So we are getting dialed in. Anything less than four minutes is usually good. Now, could you just pull it right now just pull the filter um in. you don't want to just because you're not going to get as much water in there so it, it's just you want it to be the same every time you make it that way you know if you want to change something um you know what you're changing rather than having different variables that are different every time you make it so yeah if you can kind of see in here um this looks much better than the last one it looks more like wet sand um so we're gonna try this. This one, this one might actually be pretty good. All the coffees are different, so if something isn't three and a half minutes, uh, it doesn't have to be exactly. So at in, the end of the day, it's all about how it tastes. In a perfect world, how many pour overs does it usually take for you to get dialed in? Um, probably three. About <laughs> three, and uh, we'll do at least three tonight. Yeah. And what roast is this bread? This is an Ethiopian. Um, it's no. It's really what we're chasing is a peach flavor. It's not the uh, dry. It's a wash process, so it's not going to have the um, tons of fruity flavors I've done before. It's a little bit more mild, a little bit more mellow. Uh, but we are chasing a acidity, a peach-like acidity that should give us a fruity cup taste, but be a little bit more balanced than Ethiopians I've done in the past. <laughs> Um, Audrey wants to know if you drink all of the pre-dialed in coffee. Oh yeah, I mean you're not <laughs> yeah. making swill here. Yeah. <laughs> Even though we're like, look, oh, it's still better than probably what you've drank ever in your life, Audrey. Like I, I don't want to single you out, but Sweet. this one actually smells pretty good. All right, here you go. Oh, I'm excited. Well, I'm actually kind of nervous. <laughs> It smells good. Can we get this refilled? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's really hot. Yeah. Careful with the hands there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, this one is much better. You just kind of want it to be. It's got a really good aromatic. Like, yeah. I think, you, I think you nailed it. I definitely can taste the peach. Mm -hmm. So. And it's very smooth throughout. 
I think we're one more away from this being yeah. a really dynamite cup. Now, yeah. Tell me about the. Tell me how you feel about the roast. So if you got this roast, now you don't have to. You don't have to toot my my ego at all. But <laughs> you get a, you get some of the best coffee that Kansas City has to offer, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, daily. So how does this compare? Is it honestly? This is. I mean, it's like smaller. Like, I would not be. I would be happy if Messenger roasted something like this. <laughs> no, <laughs> for real. Um, like, and that is the nice thing I found that being small home roaster, I'm getting some really unique flavors that just big roasters because they're trying the economy of scale, which means they have to roast a lot. Um, there is there has been a benefit to just being smaller in that. Yeah, I'll represent Houston. I ain't gonna lie. I may give Texas a hard time, but Houston, right there. It's probably the most coffee I've ever drank in at 9 p.m. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I mean, it, when you have kids, like this, this is nothing. Yeah. Like, this is not the elixir that it would be for like you. You might be up all night, but <laughs> he's young, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. He'll, he'll be okay. Yeah. I'll recover. Sweet. Um, yeah, so I, I loosened it up a, just a little bit more, and then do you want to try to make it? Well, let's do let's do one more. Okay. Well, I mean, I think we got. Let's see what we're at. It's up to you. We're at forty minutes. I think that'll take like to an hour solid if we do two more. So, okay. Yeah, I mean, Sweet. the people are loving what you're doing here. All so right. We got an artist, and when you got an artist, you watch an artist. Sweet. We can do another. Glad to hear that, P. Brogan. Thank you. So we just got a water refill, so we're gonna have to wait for that to boil up. So we're yeah, we're gonna hit the boil. It. We'll uh, just have a little chat here, uh, sometime. We can answer some questions. So if you guys have the burning questions about anything for Kyle, uh, get those to him. Um, again, I'm gonna keep thanking him. Thank you. I, you know, he's a young man. This is Friday night. Like, I mean, I got. I guess that is one benefit of quarantine. Um, well not quarantine, I guess that's what we call it, COVID. Yeah. COVID. Yeah. COVID. Um, but uh, thank you for that. Yeah. Everyone in the chat, thank you for being here tonight. I really appreciate all the support. I know Kyle, uh, was, I think Kyle's a little afraid that he's going to come in and be in front of one person. So um, all of you guys that have joined us, asked us questions, uh, thank you for that. If you've not followed us, uh, just go ahead and hit the bar heart button. Bark button. Heart button. Um, but I mean, that's entirely up to you. I don't want to be the guy that pushes and pushes. Um, so we got some questions coming in here, Kyle. Uh, can you add flavors after the roast? Um, I'll let you take that. You can, if you want. Like people will add syrup to it. I mean, I not prefer not syrup, but like peach or oh. like you know how like they pump it in in the cup. Yeah, well, I guess that is syrup. Yeah, like syrup. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I think that the most fun thing about coffee is that they all have different flavors, and just trying to like find different coffees that like taste different ways. So when you add it in. Um, you can do whatever you like with coffee. I mean, drink what you enjoy. But personally, I enjoy just drinking it straight the way it is and just trying a bunch of different types. There's a quote. <laughs> um, let's see, Kyle, what's your favorite way to drink coffee? Now, I know you're, you're big in the pour over, but you're also, since you work on, you work, you know, in, in, in the golden zone, you get to try a lot of good espressos. Yeah. So tell us about your favorite type of coffee to drink. Yeah, um, I mean, my favorite uh, overall is probably making pour overs. Um, lately I have been trying a lot more espresso um, so yeah I kind of I like them both I like going to ways if I just want something small and something that tastes good then I'll just get an espresso but if I'm going somewhere new and want to have like a full experience then I'll get a pour over very good okay so quick question this is probably more geared towards you than me the roaster side cold brew gimmick fad or legit brew method um, I think it is legit. I would agree. Yeah. I'm starting to see a lot more roasting being geared towards cold brew. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing really cool things, not, not only with pour overs, where they're putting ice and they're actually pouring over onto a large ice cube. So instead of you know doing different cold, like it's, a, I guess you would call it a pour over cold brew. Yeah, um, like Japanese iced coffee. Right, and it's also the ceramic, the yeah. ceramic one, which we haven't even got into that. Like yeah, the real. <laughs> Real tight twists are all in the, the like not ceramic like this like, like porous ceramic which is like bulk, it looks kind of like volcanic rock yeah I don't know if I'll ever do that here that's a little it's a little tight to the uh, 
tight to the suspenders for me, but <laughs> they're doing some really cool stuff, and um, I think cold brew is, is here to stay, and I'm, yeah. I'm not against it, because it opens up a whole new avenue of time and day for drinking. Another question about how am I doing this with two kids? Audrey, the second one really just, it, it makes you immune to that stuff. That's good, huh? Okay. Yeah, this is really good. Sweet. Yeah. Did you, um, are you going to make it any more, or do you have enough? Um, we can let Veronica try it. I have some whippy, heavy cream. Yeah, we'll, uh, we're going to make, like, two more. Okay. So yeah. we are in it we're for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Audrey, coffee has no effect on us. Yeah. <laughs> I could go to sleep at any moment. I got, can you pour <laughs> over with cold water? No, it won't. You need it to be hot, too. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you can just make a mess. They do have, like, oh. those slow brew iced coffee things mm -hmm. where, like, the ice melts, and then as it's dripping, it, like, brews over the course of, like, 24 hours. Hmm. But, Interesting. Yeah. Who is Veronica? Let her try. Well, Veronica, come say hi. Tell Hello. them who you are. So I actually work with Brian um, at our school, and Kyle is actually my fiance. So we're getting married to, we're getting ready to get married July 9th, and we're super excited. And so we're yeah. honestly taking every opportunity we can to, I don't know, do cool stuff that, with <laughs> coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker. Not I'm yet. Not, not yet. Lately, yeah. I don't know. Lately, Brian has kind of been trying to get me to try his roast at school. And I'm the one that's like, I make the faces. I'm the person that when I drink it, I'm just like, I need to add some milk to it or something. And then I know way too much about coffee for someone that doesn't really drink coffee. But it's fun. Anyways, yeah. so, yeah. And then, yeah, this is the coffee shop that he actually works at. So repping, yeah. repping the brand. Black Lenexa. Dog Coffee. That was the rule. We had him drop Black Dog <laughs> 10 times or he wasn't coming in. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But, yeah. Okay. Sweet. Okay. Is she dating Archie? That's enough! <laughs> Don't ask questions like that. <laughs> That's what? Is she dating Archie? It's a comic. Veronica is yeah. Archie. Archie and also he's a red has red hair. Archie yeah. has red hair. There's know. layers. There are yeah. layers. I won't deny it. I don't know who Archie is, so... What? That's probably for the best. Yeah. That's why I married her, because she doesn't know who Archie is. <laughs> All that just went down. Uh, How yeah. Do Hmm? How do I know when it this will is be? Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> We're just laughing at Audrey, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't! It's like feeding the beast. Well, you get one giggle on Audrey and she's gonna, she's gonna tune it in. I'm drinking out of my Black Lab coffee mug. Black that dog. is a Black Dog. Black dog. No, Black Lab. Black dog. Oh, my dad. Oh. Oh, she meant to dog. say Black Dog. <laughs> That's my sister. She oh, like nice. she's a black dog fan. Nice. She doesn't live here anymore, but um, uh, yes. Veronica is ride or die. She is. <laughs> <laughs> and your family's saying hi. We actually met at Black Dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I met my fiance at Black Dog. Oh, very nice. So. Yeah. So are you guys doing another one? Did I miss that? Yeah. We're, we're, we're two waiting more. for the water. Okay, so what are you doing now? We're going to try to get this perfect because we are here. Yeah. With which? Um, with the Costa Rica? No, we. Sorry, we don't have coaster. That's why I can't. Oh, we can't be. win Veronica over tonight because she has yeah. a very. Yeah, this but she good. doesn't like the uh, tea flavor, so that's very tea. P. Brogren is asking, "What are my thoughts on wire mesh filters versus I paper filters?" Um, yeah, we kind of touched on this earlier. Um, uh, wire filters—they are, filters, like they are more sustainable, oh. but the nice thing about paper is that it helps to absorb some of those oils that are in coffee that can kind of give it a harsh flavor. So. Yeah, I prefer to use paper filters. It just kind of gives us a cleaner cup overall. I'm uh, personally, I'm pro Ooh. paper all the way. So that, there's the hit. I'm... All right, so our water's ready here. Gonna do one more, or er, two more. So I just loosened it up a little bit, made the grind a little coarser. Um, I'm gonna weigh out some beans. And again, we're doing 22 and a half grams to 375 grams of water. So while we're doing this, is there a water to bean ratio or water to ground ratio that you follow? Yeah, so I use, it's one to 16.67 <laughs> ratio. Um, and that's actually one that I kind of like made this recipe looking at a lot of like their, uh, there's like a world brewers championship for coffee. And I kind of like looked at a lot of those recipes and looked at what ratios they were using. And a lot of them were using that ratio. 
So yeah, so it's 15 grams or 22 and a half grams of coffee to 375 grams of water. Double question is what Twitch is all about, Pete Rogan. Baking bread is also like this good uh, good analogy. You want weights anytime you are making something consistent. So weight is all about consistency. Like you could, if you got to a hurry, you could sit eyeball it and probably yeah. get something. But if you're looking, because it's kind of like when I talk about the roast shows, you would hate to have the best cup of coffee or the best loaf of bread or the best roast and then never know how to get back to it again. So what these numbers do is they provide a roadmap. So as he's dialing in, as I'm dialing things in, as a bread baker is dialing things in, they have something to go off of. Then they can start making incremental tweaks, but then they, it's, it's the very science part of this. song in Lion King when you see this. <laughs> that sun coming up, everybody. And then, I don't know if you can see when I stir it, those dry grounds kind of come up. And you don't have to stir it, but I think that stirring it is just another thing that helps it to be consistent. Just make sure that you're getting the same thing every time. What's your note, Julie? Huh? What do you want me to do? Yeah, so I would just do three pours. So the first pour is the bloom, which is 50 grams. The second pour, I go up to 175 grams. And then the third pour will be 375. stuff right there. Went a little over. <laughs> uh, I think you did pretty good for grams. <laughs> Thanks. Well, yeah. we, you'll, they'll really appreciate what they're seeing when they watch me do this. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic mustache. Yes. Thank you. If the one theme of the show, it's the greatness of said mustache. <laughs> Thank you, Blake. So, hi, Blake. You, you're on it. So I think I missed that. You said you missed 175, so you went so to 375? I, I like to do it in three different pours. So okay. the first pour, I'll go up to 175 grams, and then I'll wait about 10 seconds, and then go up to 375. Um, that's just the way that I do it. Um, there's a lot of people that just do like single pour methods. Uh, so since I just missed it, I just went up to 375. Because that's what you're getting to. Uh, yeah, that's the total, total weight, okay. yeah. Yeah, and it is 
that's the one tough thing about this. Yeah. Is that you kind of lose, like you get lost in the questions. And yeah. And so since I just did one pour, this will finish a little bit faster. Um, and so it's already at about. I don't necessarily think that's a terrible thing with yeah. this because it is light rows tend to be a little bit more like tea so it is not to see what that looks like there yeah and I think Good. you know that rolled in right at 315 yeah so I think that we got the grind nice and dialed up for this uh, particular coffee so yeah I'm excited for my third cup <laughs> so there's a question how do you know when uh, it becomes muddy and it's not blooming um, uh, when it's muddy and it's not blooming? Yes. You know, when it becomes muddy and not blooming. Uh, th so the bloom, it won't become muddy. It's just, the bloom is just giving it time for the air to get out of the way. Because there's a lot of air in between the grounds. So you pour some water in there, let those bubbles kind of escape, and then you start brewing the coffee. That way you don't have a bunch of air mixed in as you're brewing. Can you bloom it too long? Um, you could. I mean, because at that point, you're just waiting and it's kind of like extracting the coffee as it's sitting there. So, could that change the flavor? Someone has asked. Uh, could that change what? If the flavor, if you let it bloom too long. Yeah, for sure. A little over extracted. This is? No, no, no. This is. Oh. You did a fantastic job. It's. Brian's really good. good. <laughs> you want to try it? All right. You're going to get Veronica I, seal of I brought you another mug if you want oh, to and no, put a little, okay. if you I'm want a little cream in yours. Rings on. Glass of share. Get in there. <laughs> it does not get the Veronica seal of approval. <laughs> no, that's not, like, we but are, that's not bad. That's we not are bad. still working on, and that just shows, like, even though we're sitting here saying this is great, you may try a lighter roast in Ethiopian and just be like, I don't like those flavors. And that's what specialty coffee allows you to do is dial in a specific flavor because too often we go I don't like this flavor I don't like coffee but what specialty allows like I can still go into the roaster roast a medium roast for Veronica bring out the bold flavor the even flavors really cut this acid down bring up some bitter balance it out she can put a little bit of cream in it and all of a sudden like mm -hmm. it's now it's something she sure. likes so yeah. Um, that is a very distinct flavor. Yeah, this is a yeah. very tea, but it's. I think that is what you. you yeah. You said you. It's not the stone fruit, but that yeah. peach. Well, but it's peach is a stone fruit. Yeah. To a degree. And honestly, I don't know about you, but I would maybe actually tighten it back down to where it was. Yeah, I did. You did lose a little bit of kick on the back. Yeah. Because this is a little more Nasty. acidic, sour flavor. Yeah. It might be. Um, the, so we went Under a little bit to the opposite. Yeah. I mean, initially it was good, but I could see like, like click it back one click. But yeah. I still think this is. I definitely could drink this all yeah. day. So. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Well, the moment of truth is here. All it's right. time for the idiot to, to, to yeah. enter the kitchen. Get your lap track ready. <laughs> <laughs> So Kyle, you might have already answered, but what is yeah. your favorite type of coffee? Like method and yeah. roast? Did yeah. you already answer that? Yeah. You, you take oh, the, take this, you go on the other side. You get to now answer the, the All question. Right. Yeah. Yeah, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite way to drink coffee is probably pour overs. Um, I have been drinking a lot of espresso lately, but my favorite country, it changes a lot, honestly. I do, I don't like the super, like, fruity flavors that some of the Ethiopias have. So a lot of like Central America stuff is good. Another a good question for Kyle. Was there a specific cup of coffee or moment that sparked your love of coffee? Yeah, so when I started working at Black Dog, I was actually, I just worked back of house, like washing dishes. And I'd always kind of drank coffee. Um, I had like stuff from the roastery and from Starbucks. And I just always drank my coffee black. But I had some coffee at Black Dog where I work and I, it blew my mind. I was like, this is doesn't taste like coffee. Um, and it was in Ethiopia. Um, it was like a washed Ethiopia. And from then on, I just started tasting like the different single origin coffees. And my mind was constantly blown with the best cup of coffee I'd ever had. 
<laughs> so I got a question about the Kansas water to Texas water. Um, the municipal water here is, is a lot better than what we were getting in Texas. And I think that does play a favor uh, to it. It's always good to just filter it a little bit uh, to, I mean, you can get really into the science of like the pH and like how many like minerals you have. Like there's a lot of ways to test. Um, unfortunately, the major cities in Texas, uh, I don't know if people in the chat could probably adhere to that. It's just, uh, they're big cities and the water tastes like, it tastes terrible. <laughs> I don't want to be overcritical of water. Okay, so I did the, I did that. Now I'm going to put my paper in. Now, I usually just cut this seam. I don't know if you do that or not. No. I just do it out of, it's a habit. You cut so, it? No, I just fold it over. Oh, yeah, I yeah. always do that okay. too. I didn't, okay. I didn't see that part. So. Oh, yeah. Do you fold the bottom? Uh, no. Okay. Do you? Sometimes I do, but I okay. don't think it does anything. Placebo effect. Placebo effect. I don't have the hand control that you do. Oh, so. that's okay. <laughs> I'm going to hold the camera. Sweet. And then I have that spoon oh. there. So I'm gonna you know, I already missed the first step. Oh, the beans. <laughs> Got too excited. <laughs> Rookie. Cool, yeah. Okay, so 22? Twenty-two and a half. The more complicated, the better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Has to be exact. Like Watch my kid ride a bike right now. <laughs> 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 Did we dial it back already? Y yeah. Don't forget the basket. Okay. Sorry, what do you mean? Uh, Brian has talked about getting the filter set before. Oh, it's just you set the filter to like when I fold it. Oh yeah, I do. What happened here? Sweet. So it was a little over. So I just spoon out some. <laughs> do you want to wipe it? Oh, Jill was asking, um, do you get the filter wet before? Oh, yes, I do. Yeah, the filter, you got to get that wet. Get out any of those chemically paper flavors. And they're asking about Veronica's opinion. Um, she ran upstairs. She'll be right back. <laughs> hmm. So we'll ask her on this one. On the last one, Veronica was not a fan. Two. She, yeah. yeah, she doesn't like the, the more acidic flavors. She likes the darker chocolatey stuff. I'm gonna pull this camera behind me so you can see. All right, so hopefully we have enough water. Um, so 50. Yeah. 50 stop. Grams. What's the time after you stop? Like 30 seconds? Yeah. So yeah, you want to bloom it for 30 seconds. So 50. So 30 seconds, then go to 175. Yeah. 15 seconds? Uh, so you'll pour to 175, and then you'll wait till a minute and five seconds. Okay, and then I'll go to 370. Yeah, 375. 375. Yeah. All right, kids, wish me <laughs> luck. Here, start your timer. All right. Yeah, that's good. Oh, All right. overshot that's it. That's okay. Out. And then just give it a good stirring. Uh, circular motion as well. There you go. Let me just let that sit. Yeah, I borrowed that <laughs> from Black Dog. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Yeah, I don't have the pro on. 
such erasers for a living. Where can you get one of those tiny spoons? <laughs> I know. I, I like it. have borrowed that from my job. I don't know where they get it. <laughs> we don't have enough water. We're gonna have a little. Oh, we don't. I, I think we're gonna be like. Right on. Okay. We tucked to the old window. <laughs> 105 or 105? Uh, 105. Yep. Oh, someone asked if I like the coffee? Yeah. Yeah, I told them um, for you. What did you say? I said that you weren't as much of a fan. Oh, no. Oh. We ran out of Whoops. water. What did you stop at? Oh, 218. It's going to just be really, really intense coffee. Yeah. Can you we'll add water see. to it later? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. Probably it's not going to get the same flavor. Yeah. No. But... Maybe we just discovered <laughs> something amazing. I'm gonna try it. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, how'd I look? That looked good. Yeah, you were hitting the, the times. Usually, just through doing it a lot, uh, you want to reach 175 by about a minute and 50 seconds, or by well, just 50 seconds. Okay. Yeah. By 50 seconds, then, so it has some time to sit. I yeah. Know. Okay. Oh yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> Looked real profesh. Thank you. Sweet. There's what the the bed looks like. Well, <laughs> let's try. I'll be. I'll just test it. All right. I'll give you guys since this is getting to be uh, this is getting to be a little bit uh, too much for even me. <laughs> Definitely less acidic. Really? Yeah. Yeah, here. Do you want to pour some into the black? It's so it's it's gonna and at the end we gotta try that bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that might be the money <laughs> shit. <laughs> might be the old sipping bowl. Cool. It's intense. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's not bad. Tastes like I don't hate it. Like an AeroPress. It does. Yeah. I feel like I could add water to it and yeah. make a little. Wow. Here you try it. I think you'll like this. Maybe. No, it's the, it got better on the back end. I mean, not. it's got too much acid. <laughs> um, I like it. Yeah. Thoughts on adding hot water after you brewed coffee? Is it a. Uh, was it pre dial or you made it uh, too heavy? You can add. So. I personally will add water if I want to get the taste I want. That's a, that's like a drinker's thing. Like obviously he's not going to throw water on top of it if someone bought it. Yeah. Uh, but I will add hot water uh, for AeroPress for this for Mocha Pot, um, just to get it to clean it up a little bit in real time. Uh, that's just something I do personally um, because <clears throat> I kind of unlike him. I cut my teeth on. I first started with your pods and then I moved to a French press and I thought it was a real big deal <laughs> and for French press if I'd get like halfway through it I just would put more hot water in it which was actually I didn't realize that was actually making it more bitter and more terrible yeah. uh, but then I moved to uh, Americanos because I didn't understand where all the flavors were coming from because I was a very new coffee drinker and I, I didn't really have people to kind of explain it to me like you like you explained um, so for me I've always just been quick to add hot water if I want to balance the taste out a little bit. Yeah. I know Americano is probably like your coffee shop owners probably love when people order those. Yeah. You're like, great, I'll sell you just hot water. Yeah. <laughs> What's interesting is that at least for our shop, for our parameters, we're actually using more coffee for our espresso shots than we are for um, our pour overs. Because yeah. our espresso uses 25 grams. Okay, and that's and for one shot or for yeah. two? Well, well no, no, it's a, two. we pull in double okay. shots, so well, it's double okay. shot. But we only serve double shots. So. Okay. So for 16 ounces of, oh, well, we'd be done. I think that's enough coffee okay. I brewed for one night. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's incredible. Uh, the only thing I guess is time is what they're yeah. losing out on. Yeah. So when you tell us how you feel when someone orders a pour over, 
Like, are you excited because you get to share this art with them? Yeah. Are you upset because you know that, you know, Tina's going to order a double frappe latte and yeah. you got to, you know, put, squirt all the stuff in there? Like, yeah. Because I feel afraid of baristas when I order pour. Really? I'll be fully honest. I know, you know, it's an art and it, they're ask, I'm asking them to do something, but, you know, they're running a business. Yeah. And when I come just sloppy in and, like, I'll take a pour over, sir. Yeah. So tell us about it. Like, tell us how that feels. Honestly, I I think it is is an issue in the coffee industry. Of, I mean, I work in coffee, and I it's something that I'm passionate about and that I love. So whenever I see customers that come in and they want to learn more about coffee, or they want to try a pour over, or they're asking about our beans, that is my favorite part about it. So I love making pour overs, honestly, um, and just answering people's questions as I'm making it. There definitely is a lot of people that they just see it as something that takes up time and they're not happy to make it, especially at busier shops. Um, a lot of baristas will despise pour overs, <laughs> but there there are some slower shops and if you ever come into Black Dog, I would love to make you a pour over. Um, but I don't think you should be intimidated at all. Um, I think, at, if anything, that's an issue for the people that work there, the baristas. Um, yeah, and that's kind of how I view it too. Um, yeah. The farmer works tirelessly to grow a bean, and they are like, especially farmers. We get the specialty coffee yeah. shop coffee. Like they are having to change tradition from hundreds of years of doing something for a commercial crop to growing a very specialty crop. The people then that buy it and select it are having to go to these countries and make agreements with these people. Then they're bringing it back. Roasters are tirelessly roasting, trying to get you know a very consistent product. And baristas should be there. You know they're kind of the last guard between you and the coffee. So really challenge your baristas. And I'm going to guess that 90% are more than like you, more than happy to do yeah. it. Even though they may seem you know because they're working in a coffee shop and they're working really quickly. Um, that's you know this is their art. This is their passion. It's their job. And most of them. You know, it's not like Starbucks where they're just trying to get, you know, their nine bucks. Like it's, yeah. you know, coffee is a very important part of who they are. I mean, they chose this industry for a very specific reason. Um, yes, the tips, and I'm sure like being the coffee jock is uh, real cool. Uh, but it's, it's, ask them questions, like get it, like really embrace with them. Because even if initially they might seem like I'm really busy, it will, it will remind them like, yes, this is, we're trying to grow a culture of people that, you know, appreciate coffee, understand coffee, want yeah. to ask more questions about coffee because that's something the American coffee culture has been lacking because, you know, it was Fran with her coffee pot and then it was like getting your name stenciled in on a, on a cup. And now as more and more coffee shops are being open, like it's the baristas are the ones that are selling it to you, the customer, and not just the coffee, but the, the whole culture. So I really yeah. appreciate hearing that from you. Um, what is your favorite type of coffee to make? I mean, we talked about what your favorite type, like when you hear it now, you can be honest, like maybe it's to scale, but what's your favorite type of coffee to make? Um, genuinely, I, pour overs are my favorite. No. I, I mean, lattes are fun to pour, but uh, I love making pour overs. I'm uh, still, let's see. I also respect the tip very well, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's still, that's part of the American culture, too. Tip your baristas. Now, if you go to Italy, don't tip. Like, apparently, don't tip them. Huh. Uh, but here, are you working on, uh, I mean, I don't want to get into your finances, Scott. Yeah. Are you working primarily on tips? Do you work? Uh, I mean, where I work, we are very busy. So, honestly, like, half of my pay is tips. Um, but I think that I we make a lot more tips than most places. But I think no matter where you work, uh, your tips do make up the considerate portion. Um, okay, so let's see, we asked about the tips. There's another question. Um, well, let me, well, I'm thinking of that. Kyle, what's the difference? Is there a difference between coffee in a ceramic cup and coffee in a to-go paper cup? Well, you and I have had this conversation yeah. before, so it was kind of heartbreaking, but go ahead. Yeah, so I I think the main difference is, um, I mean, some people will say like maybe the, the paper gives it like a different flavor, but t to me, the real difference that I notice is that in a paper cup, it's gonna cool down faster, and as coffee cools, the flavor changes a little bit, or the way you're able to taste it. So, uh, I like drinking out of paper cups because you kind of get that full like cooling down experience and like in a shorter amount of time. Um, I'm personally all ceramic. Uh, <laughs> however, it's they have shown this is a little health tip. 
you need to be drinking your coffee lower than 160 Fahrenheit, I mean 180 Fahrenheit because it can cause esophagus damage. So uh, you've seen me do it a lot. I'm trying to train myself off it. Like once I brew it, I'll just start drinking it. Um, you should let it sit for about a minute or two. Let it bring down. Actually, they say that all the flavors, that hot flavor, there's no flavors in there. So let it bring down past 180 before you were drinking it. So even in a paper cup, if it's going to do that a little bit faster, you can get to the, the coffee a little bit quicker. Um, that's not bad advice there. Um, let's see. So, trying to metal, such as the Yeti cup. Yet, okay, so I won't drink out of metal. I yeah. think it leaves a taste. I think it marks the taste. Um, I know a lot of people do, but if you're going to get to a specialty or something you're really tasting for flavor, I would definitely stay away from the metal cups. Yeah. To me, honestly, it really just kind of temperature is the biggest thing for me. So for metal cups, it just stays hot and undrinkable for too long. <laughs> I want to like enjoy it faster. All right. Well, so how was your uh, first Twitch experience? It was awesome. Yeah, I love the setup. I love this tile back here. Yeah. <laughs> very, very nice. So yeah. thank. I think this uh, worked out really well. I really appreciate all the questions. I know I have a thousand more that I'm going to think of when I get off camera. There's one just kind of rattling around in my head. I just can't uh, pull it out. Uh, have you ever thought of a comedy special where you roast someone while you, uh, you're you gone? <laughs> you're, that's it. That's a good place to end. You're out of here, AWeb. Bye. Um, no, but uh, all in all seriousness, um, don't, don't egg her on, vegetable beard. Come on. <laughs> Uh, but in all seriousness, I really appreciate everyone coming in and watching. I'm glad that we had a, a good amount of questions for Kyle's first show. Um, if you've not done so already, go ahead and just hit the follow button. It uh, helps out a little bit uh, for just the statistics of it. Uh, Kyle, I really appreciate you coming here. I'm glad you could have been the first guest. I'm glad yeah. uh, you took some time out of uh, your schedule to come down here and visit with us. Please come back. Maybe we'll have a little bit more real operation. Uh, but again, uh, Get a pour over. Yeah, get a pour over. Yeah. Go to your coffee shop tomorrow. Dog. Go to if you're in the area. Go to Black Dog. Yeah. Um, you know, challenge your baristas. Even though they may seem a little bit surly, they they've got a they've got a golden heart under there, yeah. and they are really the the gateway to coffee for you guys. So challenge them on that. Other than that, uh, it's been great having you guys in. But uh, we've got a so I can hear the the feet the footstep of a little kid running around upstairs, and that's not good. Uh, maybe he got into some of that coffee um, and we want to let them uh, enjoy the rest of their Friday night. But thank you so much uh, for coming in. We're going to keep doing shows like this uh, the next couple of weeks. So be tuning in uh, Saturday, 8.30. I know it's Friday. We're going to try to move to Saturday. I think that's a little bit easier for some people. Uh, and Kyle, if you will do so, we will definitely have you back. So thank you very much. Yeah. Um, the rest of you, be easy and I will see you next time.